Hey, good day, evening, morning, wherever it may be you're watching, tuning in on this beautiful as prepare for uh, Holy Week, beginning with uh, Passion Sunday, which is a really a proper name for it, but we know it popularly known as Palm Sunday, and a beautiful image here of Jesus entering the city of Jerusalem. Um, just a word before I begin on the Sunday, Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, the gospel. Uh, even though we call it Palm Sunday, the gospel, the main focus is on the passion of our Lord. And if you've been here on a Palm Sunday, you realize it's quite lengthy, very lengthy. So it's really impossible for me to really to look at that gospel because there's so much, so much to it. So I'm going to keep it very, very simple today and just look at the, what do you call it, a pre-gospel or the pre-entrance of the church when we gather, receive our palms. We typically begin in front of the church. And then we have the short gospel reading dealing with Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. So it's just a few words about that. It's not a lot, but uh, honestly, it's been a kind of hectic week. It's uh, confessions going on. And we, you know, we help out each church we help out. And I can tell you, I was at high school and like 600 students. Luckily, we had a lot of priests, of course. Then tonight, John the Baptist and Ellen and tomorrow a couple of others. So really kind of right now, feeling a little crunch time. So I apologize if it was short and simple. All right, so with that, let's read the gospel that we're here, the beginning of Mass, from Matthew 21. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Unite them and bring them here to me. If anyone should say anything to you, reply, the master has need of them. Then he would send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken to the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat, up, sat upon them. The very large crowds spread their cloaks in the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And so we're familiar with the Passion, which we read later at Mass on Sunday. Um, on Friday, this was this, you know, they had the Palm Sunday entrance into the city. And probably the most glaring thing about this is how people quickly change hmm? from one Hosanna to crucify him. Years ago, years ago, I, you know, I like animals and I've been trying to get donkeys to kind of reenact what took place. But this was many years ago, oh, 30 years ago perhaps, and couldn't find a donkey. So I said, we have a horse. How about a horse? I said, that'll work, I think. But my horse is, it's an animal. So we, we got the horse, a nice, big, strong horse. And we put a little child on the horse, and we tried to reenact it. But honestly, it fell flat. It didn't work. Seeing on the horse had a whole different appearance. Is one of sort of strength, royalty, power. The horse is majestic. And, you know, and the person sitting on the horse is overlooking those below. It wasn't this meek and humble. And so it really didn't cut the, you know, cut it really. And I thought, oh boy, there's a big difference between a horse and, let's say, the donkey, okay? So other churches now, and here we have a donkey, and it's eye level. It's a simple animal. I mean, I happen to like donkeys. So I would like to have one if I could. But there's something about it. It doesn't exude that power, that, you know, strength. It's just a nice, gentle, in a way, almost gentleness. And the, really, the, the humility of it. And that's how Jesus enters. Hmm? Enters in true humility on the donkey. Anyway, the story, famous story, sends, Jesus sends the disciples to find a donkey. And then riding the donkey into the city of Jerusalem, which crowds begin to gather, spread their garments, and cut branches from trees. And the crowds then went before him that followed him, shouted, Hosanna, son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And again, even over the years, we 
again be reenacted. He's coming to church and reciting these words, Hosanna, the son of David. And I, even later, my priest said, say those words, and little by little, I actually feel that experience. It becomes real for me, as if Jesus himself is really present, that he is coming. And we're not just, remember, what took place 2,000 years ago, but I feel that, that I'm there now, and I'm welcoming Jesus. And so if you were there on Sunday, don't be so closed mouth. Let yourself go. I know what usually prevents most of us, if not all of us, we become self-conscious, especially the one besides, but to my right at your left, is not saying anything. You feel rather foolish, perhaps. But it's something we're getting into that moment that you are there, present, welcoming Jesus, our King. Let it come from your mouth and what we're singing, just sing it out. And we're not just remembering we are there, we are present. Anyway, so when they say these words, blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord, they're quoting Psalm 118. Psalm 118 is a description of a king coming into the city of Jerusalem. And by the first century, it was interpreted as a prophetic psalm, as a psalm about the coming of the future king, the Messiah, to the city of Jerusalem. So a prophetic psalm, and now all of a sudden that prophecy is being fulfilled. So when they start proclaiming the words of the psalm, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, that's 118, verse 26, if you're interested. They're in effect welcoming Jesus into the city of Jerusalem as both king and Messiah. That's why they say Hosanna to the son of David. That's the name for the king of Israel. But what's interesting about this is that if you read the verse in context, it actually says something interesting about the branches. Let's check it out. Psalm 26, 18, 26 through 7. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, we bless you from the house of the Lord. And then it goes on to say, the Lord is God and he has given us a light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. So the, the psalm was originally intended to welcome the king to Jerusalem, who was also a priest who would ascend up to the altar to offer sacrifices. So it's not just a king, but the priest. This is an Old Testament priest. Now, don't think of Catholic priests. The priest who offers sacrifice at the, at the altar. Mm-hmm. He was going to altar. So when the crowds welcomed Jesus in Jerusalem, he too is a king coming to the city of Jerusalem, and he too is going to go up to the altar to offer sacrifice. What's that sacrifice? It's going to be him. He will be the sacrifice. But it's not the sacrifice on the temple, right? It's the altar of the cross. That's Jesus' altar. When he goes on the cross, and we're here about, okay, most poignantly in the, in the Passion later that day, so when we take the word, so when I'm a palm sign, we take those words upon our lips, carry branches in procession. We are in fact welcoming Christ the King into the temple of our church and our sanctuary. And he's going to go in person as priest or the bishop. He's going to walk and proceed up the steps of the altar. So when the priest goes up, that's not merely now the priest himself, but this is Christ. Hmm? And there he offer the true sacrifice of his body and blood, soul, and divinity. We're talking about the sacrifice of the Mass. Every Mass, the priest is in persona of Christ, but now perhaps even more so the power of it. So it's a very powerful moment of Palm Sunday as we recall his triumphal entry. We also, in a sense, make it a present again in the present of the branches and the Eucharistic sacrifice. So this Palm Sunday, keep that in mind. Get, you know, let your spirit be released. And when the priest offers it on the altar, that's really Christ on the cross the sacrifice. God bless you. Have a beautiful Palm Sunday and a very holy, holy week. God bless you.